I feel it is incumbent uh, this afternoon to uh, speak, uh, especially to those uh, followers of Progressive Radio who have been having a really bad week this week, considering what has happened. First, the good news. If you are in Seattle, Washington, local uh, non-commercial station has picked up the Tom Hartman program, so you'll be able to continue to hear him there. No one has come forth to purchase any of the uh, of the lower-rated stations that probably is looking for someone to, to take them off their hands and, and turn them progressive, but... Uh, that's another story. Uh, I posted on Facebook a list of ratings for about five or six radio stations that were programming Progressive Talk, including two that had recently gone all sports, the one in Portland and the one in Seattle. Uh, of of all the ones I could find, I tried to find as many as possible. Almost all except one had a zero, had a uh, less than 1.0 rating in the market. Now let me explain a little something about ratings to you for just a second. Uh, when Arbitron uh, makes measurements of radio audiences. They, in many uh, large uh, communities, they use a device called the PPM, the people meter, uh, that uh, they say accurately uh, uh, measures who's listening to what radio station at what time. And they come out every month with a list of Who's number one? Who's number 13? Who's number 104? In radio, 1% of the audience is like gold, especially if you're in a large city with over 60 signals coming in. Now, most of us don't listen to all 60 radio stations. We probably have about three or four stations that we know about. Um maybe about two or three others that we may have just heard about. But in most cases, we probably have a handful of stations that we listen to all the time for whatever reason. And if you are a progressive, you probably have uh, a station that uh, runs progressive programming uh, locked in on your presets. Almost every single one of these stations, not only recorded uh, a rating of below a 1%. But there, all these ratings went down. In some cases, the progressive station is, was the lowest rated station on that list. And in some places, such as in New York, the progressive radio station did not even show. Now, uh, what you can do is you can go to allaccess.com. You can uh, put together a, uh, a little uh, sample profile. It's free to join. And then when you get in there, uh, click Arbitron Ratings and just find your city and find what station that, that you listen to and see where they are in terms of ratings. For instance, uh, in Los Angeles, KTLK had a rating of 0.7. Last month it had a rating of 0.9, so it went down. The number one radio station, talk station in Los Angeles, and probably the number one talk radio, talk radio station in America, KFI, was uh, doing a 4.9, 5.1, something along those lines. So you have 5.1 on one, and on the other, 0.7. Usually when that happens, your format changes. Unless, of course, there's nothing else to put on there. 
Those are the cold, hard facts of radio. Now, why did your station go all sports? Earlier last year, CBS decided to get into the sports radio network business. Uh, Disney already had ESPN Radio. NBC was has uh, sort of like a skeleton all sports radio network. CBS decided to go all out and... As, as as a bonus to any station that picks up that network, they get Jim Rome. That's kind of like, you know, I just started a new uh, talk radio network, and uh, I just said, oh, and by the way, uh, Rush Limbaugh's coming over. People would be switching in 15 seconds. And sports does better in most markets than progressive talk. That's, that is the problem. We don't really support these, these these stations. We don't write to them and say what a good job they're doing until the uh, the announcement comes. So CBS uh, Radio Network starts out with 57 stations, including the Seattle Network, the Seattle the Seattle affiliate for all the uh, progressive radio stations. There's no there is no conspiracy. Tom Hartman made a, a statement about what happened to KPOJ. He says, well, Bain slash Clear Channel, you had to bring in the Bain thing. So let me see. Clear Channel owns the station that was one of the original affiliates of Air America. Rode that horse to really good ratings. So the ratings were slipping, and they continued to do whatever they were doing. They kept Tom Hartman on the air while he was doing a, uh, a three-hour show for Air America after Al Franken leaves. He, they keep him on for an hour local. And then when Tom Hartman decides to move to noon, Portland time, Instead of running Randy Rhodes, which was a, a Clear Channel slash Premier Radio Network property live, they run Tom Hartman live because he's the local guy. He's a local boy. Tom, there's no conspiracy. Now, you're back on the air on KBCS. Congratulations. You set it up so a non-commercial station can't pick you up. But there's no conspiracy. But there was one station in that list that, I, that I've noticed. The call letters are WXXM in Madison, Wisconsin. But if you're in Madison, you just simply know it as the, the Mike 93-1 or Mike 92-1. Or just the mic. And they run pretty much the same uh, progressive uh, format as a lot of progressive stations. Sounds almost the same, except for one thing. And I know that Michigan's going through a lot of stuff, and, and, there, are, and there are a lot of uh, uh, progressives in that area, but then again, so are there progressives in Los Angeles, and so are there progressives in Portland, and Seattle, and San Francisco, where, there, where uh, progressive radio is either doing lousy, or not on at all anymore. In November of last year, they scored a 2 Point one rating, which was pretty damn high for any AM station, let alone a talk station, let alone a progressive radio station. That would make them the highest rated progressive station in the country. And, that, and they were running the election then. So the election's over. The only thing we're worried about now is the fiscal cliff. 
the Mike's ratings went from a 2.1 in November to a 3.3 in December. A full percentage point jump up. Now, why is that? Well, my uh, friend and occasional sparring partner when it comes to things like this, Sue Wilson, uh, noted that what, that this station does something that the others don't, and that's promote. They're out there promoting. They're, 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 they're pretty much in the community. I have not seen one uh, banner, one uh, bumper sticker, one T-shirt, from uh, KTLK, they actually ran ran a promo, you know, talking about all the uh, all, you know all the things that radio stations are doing, mostly their own radio stations across the hall, like Kiss FM. You know, there's one radio station that has this big, huge uh, SUV, T-shirts all over the place. How many T-shirts? Do you send out? That's what the promo said. Well, here's the answer, dude. Enough T-shirts to get yourself a .1 rating. No, no, a 1.0 rating. I'm sorry, a 1.0 rating. You need to be out in the community. You need to be visible. You need to cram your radio stations down people's throats. I, I hate to put it that way, but that's what you need to do. And the mic does that. Ergo, a 3.3 rating, while everybody else is suffering with a 0 0.7, 0 0.4, 0 0.2. We're not even, even, even being listed on the rating sheets. There is no conspiracy except a conspiracy of stupidity. So the first thing that stations that are there need to do is promote. Spend money on billboards. Good God. I mean, Clear Channel owns half the billboards in this town. They can spare about four or five well-done billboards for, for K-Talk. And yes, that means bumper stickers and T-shirts and being out there, live remotes, It means doing that. It's, just, it's just basically letting people know there's a station out there. Even if you have to do giveaways, I mean, real giveaways. I'm not talking about, uh, here's two tickets to see some... Uh, to see to see some a uh, violin concerto uh, on the uh, campus of uh, Cerritos College. I'm talking about cash. I'm talking about maybe a trip to Hawaii or something like that. What's wrong with that if you're a progressive? In fact, I tie it over to I I tie any promotion to the fiscal cliff. Be creative, folks. Now, so that's for the people who already have the stations. Now, for the rest of us, we need to get progressives who have money to actually purchase radio stations. Uh, Carl Frisch's uh, Bullfight Strategies uh, started a couple of years ago. And one of the things that made me so excited about Bullfight Strategies was they were going to go out, they were going to buy radio stations. That's right. They were going to buy radio stations across the country in big markets and small markets. To this date, it's the 5th of January, to this date, Bullfight Strategies in two years has yet to file one Notice with the FCC that they're buying a radio station. Not one. All, all bullfight strategy is doing is providing Carl Frisch with a paycheck. That's all they're doing. They're useless to me. Where are all these uh, progressives with a lot of money? Where are all these actors? And where are these? Uh, where are all these uh, entertainers? Where is Hollywood, for God's sake? 
Patrick Dempsey wants to buy a, a coffee a, a, a coffee chain that no one goes to anymore. Fine, great. You know, you're saving jobs. How about putting some money into, say, a broadcasting uh, investment? Where's Rob Reiner? Where's Ben Affleck? Where's Where's Ro- Ro- Robin Williams? Where are all are all these Hollywood people with tons of money? Who can help put together a consortium of people who can buy radio stations and put progressives on them? Where are they? Hell, where are you? When's the last time you actually sat down and wrote, and wrote a, uh, an email or uh, even, even a tweet that said, hey, we really appreciate what you're doing for our community, and, and we're, we got your back. When's the last time you did that? No, everyone waits until the cancellation notices come out. This has been really frustrating for me for the last couple of years, having to deal with not only the stupidity of the right, but also the stupidity of the left, and thinking that all we have to do is get the FCC to lean on stations for equal time. Go ahead, let's, go ahead and do that. Just remember one thing. Nobody listens to radio on Sunday morning at 5 o'clock, because so, that's where all that equal time is going to go. 5 to 7 in, in the morning on Sunday when you are too busy suffering from a hangover to listen. Look, I, I wish I were better at doing this. You know, I wish I was better at trying to convey an idea. But the reason why uh, progressive talk radio is dying, I hate to use the word dying, is because we've screwed it up from day one. Now, there is really right now one golden opportunity that's still left, if we're willing to do it. If the stations that already own stations are willing to make an investment in promotion, and if there are people, progressives, with money, with a good business sense, with a knowledge of how to promote a radio station like a radio station, not like an arm of Occupy, If you have the wherewithal to do it, set up something. Be ready to jump. Because you're going to see some progressive radio stations go out of business in the next 24 months. I do not see Los Angeles having a progressive radio station in the next 24 months unless there is someone there ready to pounce. I don't see that in New York. Unless there's somebody there ready to pounce. I don't see that in San Francisco. I don't see that in Phoenix. And good God, there's not one progressive radio station in Dallas or Houston or anywhere in Texas or Louisiana or or most of the South. The opportunities are rife. We need someone to do something about it. I can't. I I don't have money. If I did, I would. But I don't. It's up to you guys. It's up to you guys to support the ones that are still here. And I'm not talking about uh, wait till the, uh, the notices come. The notices have come. You just haven't heard the official announcement yet. The time to save the radio station is now, not after you hear it in the newspaper. See it in the newspaper, not after you see it on, on the Internet. The time to save the station is now. The time to support the station is now. The time to support their advertisers is now. The time to tell advertisers, I will buy more of your product if you do this, is now. And the time to buy 
progressive radio stations is now. Because we will not have another chance in another month. It's up to you. Now what you going to do about it? Later. <laughs>